This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we find ourselves in feudal Japan where we are daimyos trying to march our troops across the countryside. We're going to be taking over different areas and trying to build a big enough area to then drop our stronghold in and really take over that area. Today we're taking a look at Gunky Mono, which translates to War Tales. This is from Renegade Game Studios. It's for two to five players, and it's a reprint of an older game called Heartland, designed by Jeffrey D. Allers. So let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to take a daimyo tile. This will signify what color they are throughout the game. They'll also take a daimyo figure. Notice all of these are different, pretty cool in production. Each of these are just going to be your scoring pawn throughout the game, and this shows you which color you are. And whoever was the last one to go to Japan will get this awesome starting player marker. Now this is a tile laying game, so over the course of the game you're going to be playing tiles, gathering points, but you might also be moving up tracks, which will allow you to get possibly more points later in the game. Each player is given three tiles that they will not show to other players to start the game. And each of these tiles, when the player is looking at them, will have two different types of troops on there. Now they'll have different colors, but also different art as well to help you keep track of which kind of troop they are. Now thematically, the blue is infantry, the brown is samurai, the green is cavalry, the yellow is archers, and the orange is spearmen. But you could just call them colors and look at them like that as well. On your turn, you're going to select one of your tiles and you're going to place it out on the board and then you're going to score. When you're placing a tile, uh, you got to place it on a grid, I meaning it can't be off like this, it can't be, uh, you know, it has to be on the board, but you're going to cover up and line it up with a grid. Now you can never place a tile so that the same color is on top of a, the same color like this, but anything else goes for now, I'll teach you some other rules later. So when you place this, you're going to score and you have two choices when scoring. Now each side of the tile that you place can score separately. For instance, this one, you can score the size of the area that you helped build. So this is brown so in the samurai, so we have one, two, three. You could just take three points on the score track. And subsequently, this blue one, we now made three. So you could take three points there. So if you wanted to, you could take three and three and go up six points on the score track. Now if you look closely, you'll notice there's little stronghold icons here. Instead of taking the actual victory points, you can move up an honor track based upon these. So instead of scoring these three points, I could have gone up two on the honor track in this brown samurai. And let's say I'm the red player, I would go up one, two, just like that. This is going to be important about points later that I'll go over in just a moment. So every time you play a tile, you're deciding for each side whether you want the victory points, the size of the area, or to go up the tracks. And you can mix it. You can go up the tracks on both of them, get points for both of them, or split. It's your decision. Now after you've played one of those large tiles, you'll then select another one. There's three face up, you can choose any of these, or you can choose any of the top. These are split up into different stacks just to make sure it's not too tall that it will fall over easily. If someone takes one of these, then it gets immediately replaced uh, so the next players can see it. So let's say the next player goes and they put a tile like this. They want to move up two on the yellow honor track and take one, two, three, four points. So let's say that was blue, they would have gone up two on this yellow track just like that, and then that'd be the end of their turn after they draw a new tile. Now, in addition to the larger tiles, which have two sides to them, everyone is also dealt one single tile of each of the colors, and they all have two of the stronghold markers on them. On your turn, instead of playing one of your larger tiles, you can play one of these smaller tiles. Now keep in mind, when playing any tiles, you can play Anywhere on the board, they don't have to be adjacent to other tiles. You could have placed this one like this and either gotten the three points or moved up two on the honor track in green. However, sometimes you're going to want to place a tile where there's uneven levels. In this case, there's one tile here and this is the board. So you cannot place a tile like this because they're at uneven levels. In this case, you can take one of your single tiles, place it face down, and then place one of your larger tiles right on top, but only if this is going to be an even level. Now let's say we're a little bit further in the game. Now let's say we're the red player and we're uh, two spots away on yellow from getting everything even to my first stronghold. Let's say I put a tile that allowed me to move to here. Anytime you have all five of your honor markers at least up to one of the strongholds, you must take it and immediately place it on the board. Now you'll place it usually in the biggest single area. Now what this means is that at the end of your turn when you score now, you'll always get as many points that are in that area of the stronghold. 
So for instance, if it was the red player's turn next time, let's say they put this tile, and let's say they take one, two, three, four points for blue, they'll also now get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for having this stronghold area as well. But if instead they put a tile like this and increase their stronghold, they would still get the points for this. In this case, it would either be one blue or going up one on the track, but they don't get double points for this. They would still just get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you don't score it twice. You don't score it and then score it as a stronghold. It's you're getting points for this stronghold at the end of your turn. And you're getting them regardless of if you touch this area or not. Which means on other players' turns, they're likely going to be trying to make sure that you get less points by cutting your stronghold off, and you might be trying to make it larger each turn as well. And if all of your honor markers get to your second stronghold, you place that as well. The first player to get their marker to one of these banners, they get to take this on the back. It will have a secret amount of points depending here. If you get there first, you're going to get between 11 and 15. If you're the second one to get there, you'll have 6 to 10. And if you're the third one to get there, you'll have 1 to 5. Although these ones are not used in a two-player game. It's sort of a rush working up the tracks to get more randomized points. This continues until all of the stacks of the big tiles run out. At the beginning of the game, there were some tiles set aside randomly that will trigger the end of the game. And as players uh, continue to play this, there will be a tile like this is the end game tile. At this point, you make sure that everyone has equal turns, and that's the end of the game. At that point, all players that have any of these banners would then reveal them, they'd go up that amount of points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, well, there's Gunky Mono. Now, I want to disclose at the beginning of this that I mentioned earlier this was a reprint, and I loved the original Heartland so much. I mean, I studied the math behind it. I went back and forth with the designer on stuff. Like, I knew that game inside and out, and I loved it so much uh, that I did bring it to Renegade Game Studios a couple years ago in hopes that they would reprint it, and this is sort of the end of that, that it is reprinted. So I wanted to disclose that I did have some sort of a hand in getting this reprinted, uh, and so I didn't want to keep that a secret, because uh, I love the game, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have brought it to them, but I want to make sure you knew that before I talk about what I loved about this game, and maybe what I didn't like. So the new one here, Gunky Mono, I love the new theme and art. Feudal Japan's a very popular theme, and Renegade always does a great job with their art and graphic design and stuff, and no different here, it's a good job. Uh, the game is a streamlined tile laying game, and I love games that have easy, simple rules, but have lots of depth, and this is one of those. I call that my depth to complexity ratio. This game's off the charts with that. I mean, you're literally playing a tile, drawing a tile, that's it. There's a lot of choices within that, a lot of strategies and tactile uh, choices to make, uh, so I like that, that it's easy and streamlined. You're deciding, you know, you play a tile, and you're like, do I want these points now, or points later, possibly, uh, and you're working towards this thing, uh, and so it's, it's Again, easy decisions, but easy decisions from a mechanical standpoint, but hard decisions to make a lot of times in reality. I like that as people are building these areas, you're like piggybacking on these large areas. And so you're like, oh, this area is going big. That person just got six points. Well, I'm going to jump on that, seven points. And it also changes what tiles you pull. So it's like, wow, people are building up this huge area over here that's uh, the cavalry. Ooh, well, there's one there to take. I'm taking that one. And you can see what people are taking. Like, oh, wow, this is going to keep going a little while. Or maybe they're going to transition to this other thing. And that might change your decision because it's like, oh, I was going to actually keep trying to go up this other track to get my stronghold go out, be the first one to do that. But because this large area is there, oh, man, I, I, I can't. I can't pass up those points now. It's like some of those, those choices are, are tough but are fun to make. And that brings me to that next point is you're now selecting from multiple tiles. In the original heart game, Heartland, you just drew a tile off the top and that was it. It was completely random. Where now you have tiles to choose from. And again, watching what other players are choosing can help you just change your decision on what you're going to do based upon how the board looks and what they're taking, what you think they're going for, and things like that. So I like that it definitely added... Uh, it enhanced the experience by being able to choose from the tiles. I like those little single tiles. You're either using them possibly for points uh, or for the, you know, going up the stronghold or you're using them to build on top of it. I think that's sort of just a genius little thing because, you know, things are going to be at different levels and it kind of gives you that little bit to be able to build a little bit easier. I like trying to find the right time for the strongholds. That usually you're trying, if you are going down that path, you're trying to get them out fast so you have more rounds to capitalize on them. But at the same time, when you, when you get there, you've got to put it out right away. And sometimes the, there might not be an area that's really huge. So you might get close and then try for a couple of turns to build up something, trying to get others to kind of build up in there and then get the stronghold to push it on there. But other players are going to be watching that and they might not take those points because they know what you're doing. I think that's a cool thing. Uh, once your strongholds are out there, it's me, man. I mean, people are going to be cutting that off. Other people got to, you know, you got to, 
talk other people into cutting it off because you're going to be getting a ton of points from your stronghold. So it gets very mean, cutting people off. It's just really fun in that aspect. I like that you're basically racing up to those uh, point, uh, point tokens up the track. So if you're going down that track, it's a little bit of a race. It's randomized as to what point token you're getting, but at least you know what range you're getting it in. So overall, it's just the game is awesome. I've loved this game for so long to see it available in a new theme that looks good. Uh, they've done some things with the math to sort of even it out for the player counts to getting to some of those strongholds and the you know drawing the different tiles is excellent. Anything negative? Uh, the game I mentioned before, it's pretty mean. Uh, this game is cutthroat. You're going to be cutting people off, things like that. Uh, and if you don't like games where it's very confrontational like that, then this game might be too mean for some players. Uh, the other negative is there's the same amount of tiles used for four and five player counts. Uh, and so the five players, you basically get 20% less turns on a four player game. And the game's already fast and it sort of ends pretty abruptly. You're like, oh man, I finally got this thing going. I'm where I want to be. Oh, the game's over. You know, and some people might not like that. I like it because it really puts the tension to the screws the whole entire game. But if you're playing a five player game, it's even faster because you're getting less turns. Uh, so my, my favorite is two to four. Uh, three and four is my absolute favorite. Two, it still works well because you've got an open board. You've got a lot of things you can do. You can really try to, uh, you know, you just one other person to worry about. But overall, I love the game. It's obviously getting a saxophone serenade. This has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love. This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. <laughs>